Well, for more on this, uh, we're joined by uh, Diego Moya, a compass now from uh, London. He's senior America's analyst for IHS Country Risk. Thank you very much for your time. Can you just try and explain to us how exactly the situation in Venezuela got to be so bad as it is right now? Well, this is the result of uh, nearly uh, 60 years of economic mismanagement, first by President, uh, late President Hugo uh, Chavez, and now by his appointed successor, uh, Nicolás Maduro. It's also the result of a nationalist approach towards the economy, a resource nationalist approach towards uh, natural resource uh, extraction regimes, and a result specifically of a widespread wave of expropriations since 2007. Price controls and foreign exchange control have intensified the crisis, leading to a situation where the economy is expected to contract at least 9.2 percent, and shortages of food and basic goods, especially medicines, are expected to intensify uh, further. So Venezuela has got these economic problems that you've you've outlined there, but there's a political deadlock as well. The opposition is calling for a recall referendum. Uh, can you just tell us what that would mean for Maduro? Well, for Maduro, this means uh, uh, an early uh, termination of his constitutional mandate. Uh, the key thing here is that the government, which controls the electoral authority, Maduro basically, which controls the electoral authority and the Supreme Court, are conducting efforts to delay the process and try to derail the process. Now, timing is crucial here because if a recall referendum takes place this year, and specifically before 10th of January of 2017, then fresh elections need to take place, place within 30 days. That's what the Constitution uh, says. However, if a recall referendum does not take place before 10th of January of 2017, then according to the Constitution, that would fit within the last two years of Maduro's mandate, making his appointed vice president to conclude the term, as the president can freely appoint and remove uh, the vice president. So timing is absolutely crucial. The opposition is calling for a recall referendum this year, and so far the government is claiming that there's not enough time. The electoral authority is moving through the process now to try to verify the signatures, but they're introducing a lot of new steps which the Constitution does not uh, request. So clearly, these delays could make a huge difference. And the key thing is how people in the streets will react to this as the economy and shortages continue intensifying, because clearly, this increases the risk of destabilizing protests in the streets. Well, you've led me on nicely to my, to my next question, which is how do you think this is going to play out then over the next six months as we get closer to that deadline? Yes, as the economy deteriorates, so will the political and the security situation on the ground. Uh, so far, what we're seeing is a significant increase on events of looting, mainly driven by anxieties of, among the population who's starving, uh, who needs food and basic goods, which, which can, they cannot openly acquire in supermarket finances, uh, pharmacies and food stores. And the government is complicating things further by diverting the allocation of uh, food and basic goods, which are subject to price controls, to uh, collection centers managed by pro government groups. This is increasing anxieties among the population. So I think that what we're seeing is a convergence of events of looting as a result of anxieties among the population and the shortages, and anti-government protests demanding a recall referendum. Now, this convergence of events, intensifying events of looting and anti-government protests could escalate towards the point that they could go beyond the capacity of the security apparatus to contain them. If that is the case, and protests escalate beyond the capacity of the security apparatus to contain them, then that could threaten government stability and the military could intervene indirectly, I think, to force the electoral authority to have this recall referendum. Now, what we can expect, and we have to warn the international community about this specific issue, is that as protests intensify, the government will respond with a hard line. And this increases the risk of human rights violations and arbitrary attentions. In 2014, we saw at least 43 people, mainly university students and members of civil society, being killed 
arbitrary detentions a very well recorded cases of torture. So this is unfortunately the outlook of Venezuela in the next six months. Okay, um, Diego Moya Ocampos, thank you very much for outlining that for us. Thank you for your insight.